Hey guys, <clears throat> welcome back to another episode of Crazy Dad's Garage. <clears throat> this is right after Thanksgiving and I just got back from uh, going up to see some family members and ended up with a pretty big haul of some uh, nice old tools. So in the car business like I am here doing this, I just, I'm a tool fanatic. I'm one of those guys that I pick up tools all over the place. I if I get something for Christmas, I want a gift card to a tool store, you know, that sort of thing. And so <clears throat> I, I get a real kick out of uh, finding old tools and renovating them, repairing them, restoring them, whatever you like to do. So I've done some videos like that here on Crazy Dad's Garage. I'm going to do a few more um, because uh, this trip that I just took, I picked up some really fun stuff. So I'll flip the camera around here and show you some of the things that uh, I've got coming on and uh, we'll pick up one of them and start doing something with it. So I've talked about on here before that uh, not only do I love to do um, old cars and trucks and stuff, in fact, uh, just uh, for those of you that are watching, got a video coming up here real quick about getting this new floor put in my new rat rod project and so that'll be on the way but you also know that i'm a woodworker uh retired contractor that sort of thing and so this thing particularly caught my eye a while back I got offered this it's an old wood lathe came out of an old high school wood shop and uh, they were actually hauling it to the dump and my brother stopped him and got it for me it's a really good quality old lathe it's probably about 75 years old but it's been sitting out a lot. It's got quite a bit of rust on it and things. So we're going to tackle that at some point in time here. But uh, I also ended up with a couple of quarter cable uh, sanders that we'll go through and get them fixed up. But this is the stuff I want to focus on today. Ended up with a whole pile of old hammers and axe heads and different things like that. And I'm going to start through and do some videos on renovating some of this stuff. Um, I think what I'm going to start with today, just for fun, as a good starting point, is this old uh, claw hammer head here. Now, I really don't think this one is anything particularly old or special or anything, but it looks like a decent quality uh, hammer head. And on top of that, I had just picked up a uh, supply of uh, new hammer handles from a place that was getting rid of them. So I've got a hammer and a head and a handle there and we're going to walk you through. What I'm going to do is not just renovate this. I'm going to try to make it a little fancy. So I think I'm going to uh, clean it up real good and probably polish it and maybe even do a little engraving on it. And I might even uh, come in here and do some engraving on a handle. Uh, to go along with it but let's just see how this works out so we'll start this process here in just a minute i'll get the camera set up so that we can see what we're doing so let's get started here's our hammerhead let's get her tied down in here and just see what we can do I'm probably not going to do a lot of talking on this, so we'll just see what happens.
Yeah, so we've got a Stanley hammer. There's a, probably a model number in there. I can't really see all that yet, but uh, anyway, so it's not a super valuable hammer of any kind, but uh, it still makes a fun product. I really don't think that thing is truly designed to work on a high-speed grinder like that. It's throwing chunks off pretty bad. So, let's see. What do we do next? We'll take her over to our wire wheel here. All right, let's try this. Okay, so we got her cleaned up that much there. We're still going to have to figure out what to do down in here next. So we'll get her back over to the vise. All right, let's try this. See if that gets us anywhere. Getting part of it in anyway. kind of got it in there but not clear down in the middle so I'm going to try some other things here and see what I can figure out to get that um, cleaned out of there with the tools that I do have all right this seems to be working to get me down in there so. but the very little last bit of that. Let me see if I got one more tool that'll get me down in there and, and maybe reach that last section. Okay, I was able to get 99% of it with that little Dremel tool there, so that'll do it. I'm going to end up painting this area here anyway, so I'm not hyper worried about that, but we got it clean enough that we can can work with it so the next thing that I'm going to do I'm going to get the file out and we're going to start touching up 
some of the divots that are here and uh, things like this uh, place where it's been uh, messed up. That, I'll probably come in and smooth this up some more, but I'm just going to go over the whole thing because I want to get rid of the little imperfections in it. And we'll do that with the file. Um, Got to make a decision on where I'm acting because I'm going to polish this. So I'm definitely going to polish down in this area, um, probably down here. Definitely the face of it and probably this part. I haven't decided if I'm going to paint this. I think I probably will paint this area and this area. So that's uh, what I'm going to be working on now. I'm going to get the files out and start uh, touching it up here. So we'll get her set up and then I'll go find my file. Okay, this section here is probably going to be very time consuming, so I'm going to just start you into it and then we will shut it off and um, go ahead and do the bulk of it while I'm uh, off camera. So I'm going to show you here what we're trying to accomplish with these files. Using a big flat one like this is going to help me to spread the cut out over a larger area so that it stays uniform so that we don't create more uh, divots in it as we go along. But as I file that, let's see if we can get you over here to where you can see a close up. So you're seeing that we're starting to take off the high spots and any place that was low is still showing up in there. But I'll keep filing on that until I, I get rid of all of these imperfections that are in there and uh, work on this sort of stuff right here and I'll have to switch files off and some different things but that's where I'm going to be working right now so I'll keep working on this one a little bit and then we'll show you what we're coming up with. <laughs> Okay, so that's really, it took that long to get all of those, or all of that surface smoothed out. So I had, I had three gashes in it there, and those were really what took the longest to get out. But uh, you can see, we're getting a nice, pretty smooth surface there that we'll be able to go through and polish um, after this. So, I'm going to pull back here shut the camera off and I will go ahead and finish up this step on the entire surface of the hammer so that uh, uh, we get it ready for the next step so I'll be back in a little bit I'm wrapping up the last little bit with the file here I've actually been able to even get all these cast surfaces in here and back underneath the claw part um, smoothed out with the file Probably got an hour plus ish of filing in here on this thing. But it's kind of hard work, but it, I kind of, it relaxes me and I enjoy doing it. So it's fun to see something come together here. So, anyway, we're wrapping it up here and then we'll get on to the next step. I thought I would finish with that one showing you on camera but probably was the roughest one of the eight sides here um, but you just keep going on it till all of your dark spots go away and then you know you've got it smooth except for your sanding marks and that's what we're after so it's got this tiny little bit left here And 
there we go. All right, so got every side of the thing smoothed up there, and I've got a little bit of a defect left here. This is actually a concave area right there on those claws, and so it was hard to get right next to the groove. Uh, but my next step, I think it's going to take those spots out. Got this edge smoothed up. Just uh, that kind of sets it all up then for the polishing process. So, even got the head smoothed out. Got all the scratches and everything off of it. All right, so what I'm going to do next, I think, is uh, get some sandpaper on my electric sander. I've got a orbital sander, random orbital sander, and I think I'm going to try that and see how that works on smoothing that up. So I'll be back when I get that set up. Let's uh, try my uh, sander with some sandpaper on it. <laughs> all right so that's doing a really nice job there of getting that uh, smoothed up what you're after in each step of this polishing process from your filing to the sanding and each different uh, set of sandpaper you're wanting to make sure that all of the sanding or filing scratches from the previous step disappear. And that's why I had to spend a little bit of extra time there. You noticed me playing around, particularly in this area, because there were a couple of fairly deep file scratches there that weren't going away. So, got those all polished out. I like the way that turned out. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, shut the camera off and I'll work these other sides and then we'll be back to show you what we do next. Okay, I got over here to the grinding wheel or grinder. And got things uh, set up and looking through my polishing stuff and I have this, uh, it's a 3M Scotch Bright deburring wheel. So I'm gonna work on that and see how that polishes this up here. Let's just give it a shot. All right, that actually does a pretty nice job just by itself there. So we're going to use this as our next step here, and we'll go through and uh, polish up all the areas that we sanded and filed. Um, I think the way things have been going, I'm still going to leave this area here and the underside of this uh, rougher so that uh, I can paint them. But let's go through here and get some polishing done, and then uh, I'll show you how that looks after this step. Alrighty, that uh, worked out pretty nice there. So I've got it... Uh, all kind of in the first stage of polishing. Now we're going to move on into uh, using some buffing wheels. So far as I can tell from all the, I've got two different kits and they all recommend different things. So this wheel says Tripoli on it, but I'm actually going to be using a polish called stainless. So I'm going to put that on there and we're going to buff on this a little bit and see how it turns out. Yep, 
yep, that's taking it up another step, so. All right, that's putting some polish on it. We'll keep going here. Yeah, and I'll shut the camera off here and finish this step up, and then we'll show you what we got. There we go. So we got a pretty nice polish on that, <clears throat> all things considered. Now I'm going to change out my wheel here, and we'll go for the final polishing compound on it, and we'll be back with that. Okay. Got some polish on here called White Rouge on a loose, flappy wheel. Let's see if we can get just a little more polish out of this thing. Yeah, I believe that's taking it up another notch. So we'll be excited about that. Here we go. Try this where we can see see it right alongside another part. Yep, it's stepping it up just a little bit more. All right, I'm going to finish it out here and we'll show it to you when we get done. All right, somewhere there the camera clicked off. Not sure exactly what happened. Let's get this staple out of here. Um, that gone. Now I'm looking at this thing. These are obviously some very cheaply made handles. I don't know if you can see that on there. There you go. See? That's not even cut square across there. So that'll give me some room to jazz it up a little bit and make something a little nicer out of it. I think the first thing I'm going to do is uh, get my rasp out here. and We're going to work on the fitment of getting this to settle down in there a little farther. I want to get it to come down about to here and that will allow me to make it fit better in that process. I think it's going to sit on there about right. So that'll be good. All right, let me go find my wood rasp and we'll be back. I'm going to make myself a mark across here so I got a reference point of about where I want to go to with this thing. That'll just give me a ballpark idea of what I need to work on. All right, now, just to go to work rasping on it. So I can... Okay, so you're kind of getting the idea there. I'm going to go off camera and get it all finished up here. All right, got the head to fit in there pretty good. Now I'm working on the tail end or the, the butt end of the handle here. So it gets you lined up a little better. So we got this flattened out for the most part. I don't want it perfectly flat. I want it rounded off a little bit. So we got that. Pretty much where we want it. So it's going to look a whole lot better. There we go. See, we got her flattened out across there so it doesn't look like it's some awkward misshapen thing. So we'll do that. Now let me get uh, some sandpaper on my sander. We'll touch that end up. And uh, 
get it looking a little better. That's looking a lot better. I think that'll work for us here, what we're trying to do. Now, I think the next step is to figure out how I want to decorate this up here. So I'm going to play around with a pencil on it for a little bit and see if I can get a design that I like. And then I'll show you what I came up with. Hey, got my uh, wood burning tool heated up. Um, took a pencil and drew myself a design on here. And uh, ready to start burning that in. So let's see what we can do here. And this is probably not going to make for a very interesting part of the video, but I'll do it and you can see the end results so these little dinky uh wood burning tools take a long time to heat up to where they're actually going to work and then uh, you got to take it really slow as you uh, burn your way down through here and the end result might even not really show up real well. So I think what I'm going to do once I get this all wood burned in is uh, get myself a, uh, or some dark colored wood stain, some dark walnut colored stain, and uh, go over the burn marks so that uh, the, it will definitely show up. Because I had something years ago that I did, I burned a really pretty picture into a piece of wood, and when I put a clear coat over it to protect it, the clear coat killed all the burnt part of the wood, so you couldn't even hardly see the picture wasn't nearly as pretty as when I uh, first did it. So anyway, we'll uh, experiment with this. After all, it's a freebie handle on a freebie hammer, right? I think the end result's gonna be really cool though. I don't know if you can really see that on the camera. It's kind of hard for me to focus on what I'm doing here. And um, actually look at the camera and see what's going on on the camera. <laughs> so, I'll sorry, I'll show it to you here once I get it burned in good. I just want to do something here to add a little bit of something extra to this hammer so it's not just polishing the head on it. I mean, that's pretty good accomplishment in and of itself, but we do that and put a plain cheap handle in it. It uh, doesn't necessarily do anything. So. There we go, I've got the outline pattern. I'm gonna put a crosshatch pattern in it, starting at this corner and going about a 45. And I am freehanding this. Probably would be a lot smarter to actually draw it on there with pencil so that I could see that my lines were actually 
pretty accurate. So that's what I'm going to do and work my way across it. I cheated and went ahead and did this side. So I'll finish up here. You can kind of see the general idea of what we're doing. I want to bring those lines right up to the other line and then I will turn everything around and draw in the final end of them right there like this so that I don't end up dragging my iron out across and outside of the pattern. So I'll go ahead and carry that all the way out, down off camera. Let's get this part of the pattern put in. All right. So there's that pattern in there. I don't think I'm going to do a crosshatch pattern on this. I think I'm going to leave it just like that. Gives it some detail um, to give it some definition there. But I'm going to go through and I'll finish up all of this. And uh, we'll come back at that point. Okay, got that pattern wood burned in both sides. I'm good with that. Now what I'm going to do, um, because the finish on this thing is still rough, and I want to take the roughness off of this part that I didn't just made, I'm going to hit this with some sandpaper and uh, we're going to smooth the whole thing up here and get rid of the roughness in it so that we can put another coat of finish on it yeah that's uh, knocking most of that roughness off of there and then we'll Sand off our black lines there so that they don't show up. going to work out good. So by wood burning that in there, we're giving this a little texture, makes it easier to grip. But uh, by sanding the highlights off of it, we're keeping it so that it's not sticking up above the surface. As that wood burner went over that and, and did its... Uh, thing there what it what it did is it melted the uh, plastic polyurethane finish that was on the surface and that left a V uh, where, where that was sticking up above the surface and so that's what this is doing is knocking that back down um, so that it doesn't uh, stick up there and I got these black marks there that like I said, I'm not sure what they are, but looks like they're kind of sanding off as we go. No, let's scrape that a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that helped. using this utility knife is giving it a nicer finish and it's cleaning up some of that mess that's in there too so I'm going to do that over this whole deal
There we go. Yeah, I really like the way that's turned out. So, I'll go back to getting the whole thing sanded here. so far I'm liking the way that's working out alrighty let's uh, see what we can do here I think I want to make this fit a little tighter here um, so that I can get a better uh, seating surface on things so to do that Got this uh, back cut saw that will uh, allow me to get a good cut across there. That's better. I think I can work with that. Got it in there. Now, when we, as we do our wedges, so I'll put a wedge in this way, and then we're going to need to put some wedges in here too. I'll have to make up some to uh, center that thing so that it doesn't uh, want to move back around on us. But all right, I believe got that where we want it. Okay, here we go. We're going to put the head and the handle on. So I've got some uh, two-part epoxy here. Get her mixed up. This is a five-minute epoxy, so it should set up pretty quick. I want to use this so that I can fill those gaps in there. I think I'm going to use the epoxy instead of trying to cut some extra wedges. So... Uh, best tool for applying this stuff. It's too stiff to get down there and get what it needs to get. So get our wedge coated up real good here. Mm-hmm. 
end. Here we go. Oops, sorry, you're not gonna be able to see this. Here we go. Now I want to get that extra epoxy all down in where it can actually fill up holes and stuff. like it to all settle down in those holes there um, where we were going to need the extra wedges but we're just going to have to kind of play it by ear here and see seems to be doing it so for the most part so i think we'll be good there all right, so now we gotta just give that some time to set up, and um, I'll come back at that point. Okay, looks like our epoxy has set up. It's not anywhere near hard enough yet, but uh, it'll let me uh, do the prep that I need to on the thing. So. Tape off. I heated. It's, it's actually it's uh, after Thanksgiving here when I'm doing this in my shop. My shop's pretty cold, so I heated the hammer head up with a heat gun to help that uh, um, epoxy to cure because epoxy cures by getting hot. And uh, when you're in a cold environment, it makes it a little harder for it to cure sometimes. So, heating that up, I'm hoping at least, uh, helped it to kick off a little faster. So, there we have it. And let's see if I can. Uh, Trim that with my coping saw. Yeah, got to get a better camera set up here. Could sand this or file it or any number of things, but I'd rather not do something that's going to scratch that polished metal if I can help it. I'm hoping this won't, but. Uh...
Well, anyway, I like the way that's turned out there. So we're in good shape. Uh, we'll do a little more trimming of that epoxy down along here. Now let's uh, tape it off, tape the hammer head off so that we can uh, put some clear coat on the handle. All right, there we go. Now, slipping my supply. I've got some of this uh, Minwax uh, polyurethane fast drying, so that should work really good for this. It's a semi gloss, so I'm going to put a couple of coats on here and we will be ready to go. I'm going to shut the camera off, do this off camera. Alrighty, got three coats of clear on there. Looks pretty nice. So we'll get the paint tape back off and uh, probably go over and give it a final polish. Uh, I'm on the wheel over there. And that should wrap us up. I, I think I'll uh, I'll put some oil on it um, just to give it a little thin layer of oil on the polished metal because I don't want it to start developing a surface rust and uh, it sure could because it's just plain old clean steel right now. that point I will come do some final little touch-ups on it and I'll be back and we'll have ourselves a hammer alrighty there she is got her all done again it's not perfect this is my first try at doing this actually uh, I could do a little bit better job of getting the scratches out of things, but uh, I'm happy with this thing. It uh, should uh, make a fun little display hammer to go with my other tools that I've got that I've done some similar thing with. So there we go. Um, probably a fairly long video for this, but I've enjoyed doing this. I'd encourage you look around, see if you can find something like this, and uh, fix it up. It gives it's kind of a very relaxing, enjoyable thing to do if you got a couple of days off to mess with. So there we go. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you'll take time and subscribe to the channel and uh, um, leave a comment if you'd like to. Anyway, have a great day. Thanks. See you later from Crazy Dad's Garage.